Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a KY031 knock sensor module, so let's go. All right, so first off, the knock sensor module is a vibration sensor. It sends a signal when it's knocked or tapped, um, and it has that detection through the actual spring inside that sensor. Now, that then completes the circuit, sending the digital signal out through the signal pin. Now, you can pick these sensors up online. I've got a, a few links in the description below for eBay, AliExpress and stuff. But basically, they're a few dollars with shipping. So nice and cheap, easy type of vibration switch for your circuits or your projects. So as for the specs of the module, like I said before, there's a spring inside that sensor. Uh, there's a 10K ohm resistor and then there's the three male header pins. And so the spring will emit a high signal when the vibration is detected. It works between the 3.3 and 5 volts and it's a digital output. As for the wiring of the circuit, pretty straightforward. We've got the 5 volt, which is going to the VCC on the module, which is the center pin. We've got the ground, which is going from the ground on the Arduino to the negative or the ground on the module itself. And then the S, which is the signal from the module is going out to a digital pin on the Arduino. Now, like I always say, you can plug it into any of digital pins. Just make sure you reflect it in your code, which I'll show you a little later. As you can see here, I'm using an Arduino Mega. Now I've got the five volt and ground connected up, but for the signal, I'm connecting that into pin 52, which I'll just adjust in the code myself. One other thing you might notice is that my signal pin is on the right hand side compared to on the wiring diagram because the generic sensor that I purchased had the wiring around the opposite way. Now, if you have this same issue, you can try by just switching the sensor around if you're not getting any output and you can try that way. It's not going to be an issue if you switch around the sensor and reverse it the other way because all you're going to change is the ground and the signal pins. The VCC, which has the five volts on it, is in the center and doesn't change. So it's not an issue. You can test it if that's a problem with your circuit. Now, when it comes to coding for this sensor, uh, it's very basic. All we're really doing is just seeing if there's a digital signal coming in on the pin that we selected. And then we're just putting an output of the onboard LED, that's all. So as I was saying, we need to assign the pin where the digital signal's coming in. I'm using pin 52 because of that's where I put the wire into my Arduino Mega. You would put whatever pin it is that you've connected the digital line into. So the next thing is the LED. This onboard LED is always set for pin 13, so you don't need to change that. Other than that, we've just set that the LED is an output and the signal coming in on pin 52 or that shock pin is actually an input. Then the main part of the code is just the digital read on that shock pin. So it's just reading what's coming in as soon as it sees. And it'll just assign the integer of value to whatever it's seeing from the sensor. And then after that, we're just basically having a value here that detects, okay, if, it, if I see something or if I don't see something, it'll make the LED high or low and that's it. And you don't need to have that in there. You could set that up to be whatever you want. You could have it to flash an LED, have a high on you, one of your digital pin outputs. You could make it do an alarm or, you know, some type of output from a speaker or something like that. That's up to you and whatever your project is going to be. As you can see on mine, when I flick that spring and it bounces around, uh, it actually lights up on the onboard LED. So that's just how I set mine up. Now, that's as simple as it is. You can do it on different angles. Um, it's just the way that the spring's set up with the actual uh, sensor. So you can do it a lot of different ways, but it's pretty straightforward. Other than that, that's about it for this sensor. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, so you can keep up to date with similar projects like this. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.